Should we be changing the quarantine protocols based on the less severe virus just so that um, things don't, you know, we don't lock down and don't get into that same morass? We, it, it, you see, look what happened to the airlines over, over the, the weekend. I mean, there are trade-offs. I mean, look at the people that are, all, we're hearing about drug abuse, all the things that happen when you're in this hyper, um, uh, you know, the, the fear stage. Is it, 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 do we ever make tack a little bit away from that to, to an endemic disease that's, that's like a, a bad flu or something like that? Or, or are we in permanent possible lockdown mode with every new variant, doctor? Well, I don't think we're going to be in this vicious cycle of constantly seeing, you know, lockdowns or restrictions. I think first, human behavior plays a very large role. So people just innately, when they see cases go up, they're going to want to do the right thing to protect themselves and family members. So they're going to go ahead and put on a mask. So I think one of the single best things that anybody can do besides obviously getting vaccinated is to make sure you have a good mask at home. So as the weather changes outside, you put a raincoat on, if it's raining very similarly, is if the virus continues to spread, you want to go ahead and, and put that mask on. I would say continue doing the activities that you enjoy doing, but do it safely. We have learned so much about this virus that we can continue to do many of the things that we love, but we could do, we just have to apply these risk reduction measures. We're going to get you know through the other you know side of this pandemic. The big question is when, right? When we look at the timeline, is it going to be? two months from now, three months from now, four months from now. I think what we can see, and I've mentioned this, you know, on the show last time is, you know, with this Omicron variant, we're going to see much more immunity in the population. So when we see another variant come up down the line, we'll be much better prepared. There's also a lot of tools in our toolbox. And again, you're probably hearing this many times as well as the viewers. But I think that as we look at living with this virus, we can do so safely. We just can't, you know, uh, we, we just have to make sure we do everything to preserve hospital capacity right now. We're still in this pandemic, still early on. Two years certainly seems like a long time, but, you know, in pandemic years, that's not a very long time if you look at previous pandemics. Again, we're going to get over this, but we all just need to make sure we do our part so that way we can kind of go on and, and live a, a COVID, I wouldn't say a COVID-free life because COVID is going to be with us, but at least something that we can see that we can, uh, you know, continue to live with and not see so much morbidity and mortality in our communities on an ongoing basis. Dr. Madad, one, one of the problems has been testing. I, I mean, testing has crumbled as Omicron crazy, cases have crept up. Um, we, we got our, our kids tested on Tuesday of last week. We didn't get one of our daughter's results until yesterday. That's completely useless. You can't find a lot of these COVID tests anywhere, at least not in this region. If you go to the drugstore, if you go to Walmart, any of those places, um, they're sold out because there's so much demand. And by the way, if you've got a family of five or six people and somebody in the house develops COVID, the number of tests you need to continue to test everybody else in the house to make sure they don't get it is pretty phenomenal. It's not like you can have two tests per person. You need, you know, six, seven, eight tests per person if everybody else is going to continue living their lives. What, what do we do about that? We're two years in, and that may not be a lot of time in pandemic time, but it, it seems like plenty of time to have gotten to the point where we could have a better testing system set up. Yeah, I 100% agree. I feel like the testing debacle continues to uh, to occur. We should have been ahead of the, the testing game. And unfortunately, we're always two steps behind. The announcement that the Biden administration has made of 500 million tests can't come soon enough. It's going to come after the new year. And we know that we're going to see much more transmission in households given, you know, holiday gatherings. And so testing is going to continue to uh, be, uh, you know, a bottleneck here around the United States. Even for us, you know, at local farms, it's really hard to, to find um, even rapid uh, tests. So, you know, it's really unfortunate. So I think what I would say is, A, testing is going to be very hard to come by. Turnaround times are going to be quite high. So if you think you're sick, if you think you've had high-risk exposure, go ahead and isolate yourself. Now the guidance um, CDC has come out with, mainly for healthcare workers, but in fact, I would venture out and say, you know, it can apply to the general public, is saying, you know, seven days of isolation with a negative test, or, you know, in the state of New York, which has really gone, uh, you know, a step ahead, has mentioned five days, you know, if you're asymptomatic. And that's where testing also plays a key role. But again, testing is something that's really a constraining factor here. So I would say is if you are symptomatic and don't brush off these benign uh, symptoms as something, you know, you can just, you know, go ahead and, and uh, you know, move forward with, I would say go ahead and isolate. We really want to do everything we can to curb the transmission rates in our communities right now.